Jordan Belfort back in the spotlight with a new book, Way of the Wolf. Jordan, obviously, the movie The Wolf of Wall Street was based off of another one of your books from 10 years ago. Right. What's one thing we don't know about Jordan Belfort? Um, wow, one thing, one of the problems with me is everyone knows my whole life from the movie. I think what people don't know about me is that, uh, you know, that the movie sort of depicts that the, the character I was back in the day, right? Uh, sort of this over-the-top character, you know, uh, just driven and, um, you know, you know, willing to cut corners. And I think that people will don't, don't realize now is that I'm very much the opposite in business. Uh, you know, I'm almost extra careful than pretty much anyone I know in terms of when it comes to, you know, making sure that I don't cut corners, uh, maintaining my integrity and my ethics and, uh, and going out there and using the, the abilities I have and the talents and what I teach people in persuasion with the straight line system, which is what this new book is about. Um, to succeed, but doing it the right way and, and not just focusing on making money for the sake of making money. But I got to tell you, I mean, when you talk about your advice, I mean, what do you say to those who are skeptical? I mean, if I follow this advice, I mean, where is it going to lead me? <laughs> well, I think you should read the book and decide for yourself. Or just read the prologue, it's free. And, you know, get a sense of what the book is about. And I, I've been teaching this around the world for, you know, uh, the last 10 years. And uh, if you just went to my Facebook wall and look what independent people write, uh, I, it, it's a, a really powerful system that's changed people's lives you know, in all industries, not just in sales, but no matter what you do. And I think that one of the mistakes people make is they, they look at sales as being just for salespeople. And I, I think that it's just completely a mistake that you know, persuasion, influence, the ability to sell is, is for everybody. Whether you're a, a mom trying to influence your children to make their beds, do their homework, uh, you're a teacher trying to influence students on the value of education, a pastor, a lawyer, uh, it doesn't matter what you do, you're always trying to share your ideas your vision for the future with other people in a way that connects with them and it's a skill that many people don't have and that they need. Now for people who don't know, Jordan obviously you served time in prison for financial crimes. Um, what would you say is possible now? I mean do you think you could recreate the scheme that you did all those years ago today? Uh, I mean 99% of what I did was legitimate. It was a regular firm where everything was running the right way and then I was you know, in one little defined area, I was flipping units and then that turned into what you call a pump and dump, right? Um, it still happens to this day. Uh, people use the internet more now in like chat rooms, they talk stocks up and stuff like that. But, you know, I think those things will always be around, you know, in, in some way, exactly the same way. I mean, I don't know if it would be exactly the same way because the internet is such a, a big part of everything right now. But and, and a lot of people lost money based on, you know, what you did. So right. you're now making a lot of money with your speaking career, your right. book writing career. Is that money going back to those oh, yeah, victims? yeah, I pay back a lot of money. Yeah, sure, I uh, work with the government. I actually pay back money every single month and it's been great and I paid back a lot and I continue to pay back. And I How hope much pay, have you paid back? Probably uh, 18, 19 million already and I continue to pay back and I'll pay back more. How much more? All of it. Really? It's my goal. So, so I won't buy books. <laughs> so, so this is more than just the return of Jordan Belfort? Well, I think it's always been my intent was to sort of go out there and, um, you know, live in a certain way, not in the way that I lived back in the day, which was just about how much money could I make for myself, was really to empower other people and also make amends for the past and, uh, and live a good life at the same time. And I don't think those are mutually exclusive. Uh, and I think I've done pretty well with that. And uh, I continue to uh, strive to do even better in the future. Let me ask you about Wall Street culture, of course, which we saw in the movie The Wolf of Wall Street. How has it changed now, do you think? I mean, you must talk to Wall Street people all the time. Right. Well, I, mean, I think that, you know, for many years, I was, it was frustrating to me that, you know, I, I got in trouble, and I should have gotten in trouble for what I did, but I was always like, well, it wasn't just me. It was, Wall Street had a sort of a, a, a culture that was somewhat bankrupt, and I think that kind of proved out in 2008 when we saw what was going on all over. Yet no one went to jail based on what happened in 2008. That's not my problem. You know, I can't, I'm happy for they, they didn't, I'm, you know, sad people that thought they should have. But for me, I look, I deserve to go to jail, I did, and that's, and that, that's a new chapter of my life now, right? So um, I think that things have gotten better though since then. I really do, I think that there's been- In what way? I think that, that, that the, the GFC was a shock to the system for people. Global financial crisis. Yeah, yeah. And I think that there was, I think it was like this sort of wholesale betrayal of the public trust that occurred at, at every level from big firms down on down and I I think a lesson was learned and I think that firms have gotten a lot more uh, uh, vigilant about uh, about making sure that the systems in place don't incentivize bad behavior and a lot of that was that that people were getting paid no matter what the outcome 
So whether your clients made money or lost money, the brokers would make money either way, and the firms would, and bonuses were given out based on on. The you think that's happening less right now? I think it's happening less. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Although you look at Equifax, I mean that guy's made well over a hundred million dollars, and look what happened to that firm. So there's certainly cases of it. It's always going. It's always going to be there. That's human nature. Uh, but but I think that there was sort of like a high point, which it was having when I was there. I wasn't the only one doing it myself. And uh, but at 2008, I think that was sort of like the the, the, the sort of like the the, the, the belcher all came out like and everyone looked and whoa. I think things have gotten better. I really do. Wall Street culture has always sort of been under the microscope, but right now Silicon Valley is really in the crosshairs right. over you know gender discrimination, sexual harassment. Are there any similarities between what we read about in terms of what's going on in Silicon Valley versus your time on Wall Street? I think wherever people are making a lot of money, there's going to be the sort of behaviors that, that you see playing out where young people make a lot of money very quickly and then they don't know what, quite what to do with it, how to uh, attach value to that money. So they start spending and, and doing things that, that seem like socially out of the norm. And I, and I think that, um, you know, like everything else, Wall Street had to grow up a bit. And I think the people in Silicon, Silicon Valley have to grow up in the sense of the, uh, you know, they find it's easy to make money, but there's another side to the equation. That's the ethics, the integrity, and I learned the hard way that you know without that side of the equation, your, your success isn't lasting, and it doesn't really feel that good anyway. And uh, and, I, and I think that, and, I, and again, you know, I think it's very easy to focus on the bad players. Right. There's always a lot of great players too. Think people that are doing it right, and even in the worst of times, even in the GFC, which probably was the global financial crisis, which was the worst, still many many people weren't, you know, doing things wrong. So. So what what are you doing now with your money besides paying back? people that lost money because of your crimes, are you investing in the markets? I do, but I, I live, you know, for me it's really, I'm very different than I used to be. I'm older. The things that make sense at 25 don't make sense at 55, right? So I'm not out there buying fast cars and yachts and trying to, <laughs> but you must have a nice car. I have a nice car, but I don't really drive anywhere. I drive to the tennis court and back. But you don't have a plane or anything like that? I don't have a plane, you know, um, but, but um, um, or certainly a yacht, uh, you know, which I would never get again. Um, but I, I think for me, it's not, I, I don't use money as my sole indicator of how well I'm doing, all right? Um, I have many other indicators as well in terms of, you know, how many people um, are attending my events, how many people are being helped by what, I mean, this book I wrote, The Way of the Wolf, The Straight Line System, is a very powerful system that can help people. So I, to me, success is just about also broadening the scope of people that I interact with and stuff. It's not just dollars and cents. Now, so many people made a ton of money this year investing in Bitcoin. What do you think of Bitcoin? We had former JP, or we had current JP Morgan CEO, Jamie Dimon, come out and say it's a fraud. Do you think Bitcoin is a fraud? Yes. And why, why is that? Well, I think he's right. I mean, I, I, th I think that, it, that, that um, I don't think it's a great model. I'm not saying cryptocurrencies, there, there, there won't be one. I think there will be one. But I think it has to have some backing by, uh, some central governments out there because um, the, the biggest problem I see with Bitcoin, why I would never buy it, is that they could steal them from you. Like they hack into your phone or something. I know, I know people that have lost all their money like that. And, it's, and, and, uh, and also it's just um, you know, the idea that it's basically, listen, I mean, the currency all is air, I guess, when you think about it, right? But this specifically, because it's being backed by nothing other than a program that creates artificial scarcity, it seems kind of bizarre to me that it, it could really ever be sustainable forever without the, listen, again, you know, things go artificially up very, very high and they go artificially down, right? The whole reason the Federal Reserve was introduced into the economy was to try to, try to helpfully cushion those blows and panics, right? There won't be a time when everyone is freaking out about Bitcoin and dumps it and God knows what's going to happen. Or like with Mt. Gox, when that went back, and all of a sudden they found out that, wait a second, my Bitcoins aren't safe. It was in the bank and the bank is gone. There's all these bumps in the road. And I also think that sooner or later, a central bank or a, or a consortium is going to introduce their own cryptocurrency, and that is what's going to take hold. Yeah, the Fed has been pretty quiet about Bitcoin. We haven't really heard much from them. The Chinese central bank has not been quiet, yes. and they're indicating that they're, they're probably going to outlaw it, if they haven't already said that in so many words. But, um, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't or shouldn't buy Bitcoin, but what I'm saying is I personally, myself, um, would be very, very uh, careful about investing a lot of money in something that could vanish very quickly. You mentioned the hacking risk with Bitcoin. You know, the government came after you pretty hard. So I have to ask you, what was your reaction when you heard the SEC was hacked, which just happened not too long ago? <laughs> you know, I don't wish that anybody should get hacked. It's a terrible thing. But <laughs> <laughs> I never had that much respect for the SEC. I had a lot more respect for the U.S. Attorney's Office, that they were a lot more diligent and a lot smarter and a lot more capable of what they did. So, uh, you know, uh, but I have no negative comments to make about that, but I think it's ironic, right? Also, before we let you go, billionaire hedge fund manager Steve Cohen 
getting back into the business. Any advice for him? Be careful. <laughs> I, listen, I think that, you know, happy for the guy he didn't get in trouble. You know, he, he, you know nothing really happened where everyone thought something was going to happen. But I'm sure that, uh, you know, you know, whatever he was doing, anything that, that, that was perceived as being wrong, I'm sure he'll be, he'll be very, very careful to make sure he doesn't go trade into that area again. So, uh, my good luck to the guy. I hope he does great. All right. Jordan Belfort, thank you so much. My pleasure.